let's talk about this question of card swipe this question says there are people entering the building and they have some id associated so i'm going to just take an example where let's say maximum id is six so question says people are entering the building or exiting the building and we know their card swipe information so just just if we take as an as an example let's say the card swipes are happening like this that first card swipe happened for a person with id2 so if you see right now initially uh, there were no people in the building and the card swipe happened for two now what can we say about this card swipe of two that means the person with card id2 has entered the building now if the person is entering the building we should actually increment the count so far we have one person in the building okay same way another person does card swipe let's say three now when three enters you can say the count of people in the building has become two now next if a person with card two swipes again what this means is the person who is inside the building he is swiping again and he is leaving the building so if you see now the person has reduced by one and next if it is four next it is four next it is one next it is three next it is one and next it is five let's say if these were the card swipes what we will see is right now there is one person in the building with three next person with id4 enters so it becomes two the person with id4 leaves it becomes one same way person with id1 enters it becomes two the person with id3 three actually if you see exits three was already there so we can cancel them out then person with id1 also leaves person with id5 enters so eventually in the end if you see one person remains so this question is all about finding out what is the maximum number of people at any moment in the building which you can see is two that's what this question asks us to do so eventually there are two types of operations we are performing one card swipe is for swiping another is for swipe out which requires us to know whether a person is in or not so it is one thing we need to do is we need to check if the person is in or not and second thing that we want to know is uh, or or want to do is if the person is not in we want to mark the person in so this is the ultimate thing that we, that we have to uh, do now people who are aware of set data structure so set is there in every uh, kind of every language provides set set data structure which provides us essentially three functions we can insert an item we can remove an item and we can check if item is there or not and one more thing is we can also get to know the size of the set if these four functions are available to you using this can you build up a solution for above problem so if you really see when you see a person for the first time or when you see a number first thing we can do is we can check if set has it if set doesn't have what we will do is we will insert it into the set okay we will check and we will insert now if you see a number like 3 three is check in the set it will not be there then insert 3 in the set now the set size will become 2 so it is the maximum value of size of set we are tracking next person 2 comes again check if 2 is already there in the set if it is there in the set we can actually go and remove it so when you see something for the second time you just remove from the set when you see something for the first time you can insert in the set and whether we are seeing the item for the first time or second time can be validated with the help of a check function yeah so simple set would help us solve this problem usually sets are of two types one type of set gives us time complexity of log n which are internally implemented as balanced bst balanced binary search tree removal also causes log n check is also log n and size is typically constant time operation second type of set that exists is called hash table 
that provides all these operation in constant times. So insertion is constant, removal is constant, check is constant. Now in this problem, if we if we pay attention to the constraints, constraint said the value in the array is maximum n. If the value is maximum n, and n is 2 into 10 to the power 5, we can actually build a set using our own hash table. A hash table is nothing but it's a simple array that we can take. For above example, if you see, if we take an array of size 7, because if n is 6, it is sufficient to take an array of size 7. Zero index will ignore because there is no person with ID 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We will use index marking technique in this array. Originally, we will fill zeros in this array. Zero means these IDs, these people are not in. Now, when the person with ID 2 comes, we can go to index 2 and check its state is zero. That means this person is not in. So check function is easy to implement. Check in this array means if this is, let's say this is array A, check function is nothing but if A of I is zero, the person is not in. It's not in. Same way, if A of I is one, the person is in. Now, if A of I is initially zero, person is not in, and we are seeing a person coming as two, what we can do is we can change this two to one. We are marking here the person is in. And the moment you mark the person is in, you can increment the count by one. So count became one so far. Next we see three. Now three can be checked here, three's value is zero. If it is zero, we can go and update its value, we can mark its value as one. This is more or less like we are implementing insert function on this array. Okay, so now the count becomes two. One changes to two. Now when two comes again, you go to index two and check, two is already one. That means the person with ID two was inside the building. And what we have to do is, we just have to make it zero and we should decrement the count. Okay, so if you see, we are able to implement check directly by checking the index. Insert means we will go and modify from zero to one and remove means we will modify one to zero. And size is something that we can keep track of one variable. Ideally for size, we would have to loop over the entire array, which will be a costly operation. So rather than looping over the entire array, whenever a zero changes to one, we increment the count. Whenever a one changes to zero, we decrement the count. And size is something we will be able to maintain and we will be able to solve this problem with the help of array. The reason for that is the constraint for n is uh, just two into 10 to the power five. And it is perfectly okay to take an array of size up to 10 to the power seven in, in our programs. If this program had constraints in the sense like value of AI can be up to 10 to the power nine, then set would have been the only option to solve this problem. Constraints n made it easy to solve this problem with the help of one array itself. You can call this technique as index marking technique. We are marking every index for presence or absence from the building. Yeah, so if we go with this approach, the time complexity will be just linear, it will be n time complexity. And if you see the constraints allowed us to have n time complexity or n log n, because n log n also if we take n value, if you take all the test cases and sum all the n, maximum value of sum of all the n will be 10 power 6. 10 power 6 log base 2 of 10 power 6. This will be 10 power 6. For this identity, what we do is we utilize the fact 10 power 3 is nearly 2 power 10. So 10 power 6 will be what? According to this identity, if you go do a square on both the sides, so 10 power 6 will be nearly 2 power 20. If we replace in place of this, if we put two part 20, equation becomes simple to solve. 20 comes forward, it becomes log base two of two, which is nothing but this is one. So our time complexity becomes 20 into 10 power six. Even if we go with step based approach with log n for every operation. I hope this discussion was useful. You can go ahead and up solve this question.